George Crum here, Fish Alaska Magazine. Today I'm going to tell you how to make your own space wivels. You may be wondering, what's a space wivel? Well, these are all examples of space wivels. Here's one that was made by the Fly Fishing Shop in Welch's, Oregon. They're a good one. They are currently, well, the business was sold, and I'm not sure they're actually selling anything right now. This next one was made by Rio. It was okay. To me, the swivel was uh, a little bit too big and it really caught going through the guides of my spay rod. So the design was fine, but the swivel was too big. And because both of those were hard to come by, I began to make my own um, several years ago and it's not really hard to make them. You can use a very small, high quality swivel. And I can tell you this, I don't want to go anywhere casting a spay rod especially if you're using monofilament running line without having a space swivel. If you use a space swivel, you will never have to suffer from the kinks and coils and twisting that happens from making repetitive casting motions while you're spay casting. This simply eliminates the problem altogether. And if you, every time you put new running line on, if you put one of these on there, you'll be good to go for a season. These usually last a season or two before the, uh, braided loops at the ends of them start looking a little bit worn and then I replace them. I've never had one of these fail, in case you're wondering. And uh, next I'll talk about what you need to make your own. The first thing you're gonna need is some braided monofilaments. This is 35 pound Gouda Broad. They don't make this anymore. Uh, you may still be able to find some on eBay or something, but as an alternative, Cortland makes a 30 pound braided monofilament and it works just fine and it's heavy enough. Need a pair of scissors, of course, to cut it. You'll need a fly tying bobbin threader. You'll need some UV glue and a UV curing light. And if you're gonna make several of these, it's helpful to have a ruler so that you can repeat the lengths of material that you use to make these things. You'll notice that in the three examples that I've held up, they vary in length. If I were to hold these up end to end, you can see that uh, the one that I made is actually quite a bit longer. It's longer than it needs to be. Um, my preference would be to have it a little bit shorter than that. Somewhere between these two would probably be about right. So that's what I'll try to do when I make this next one. You'll also need swivels. And the, the key with this is you want to use a strong enough swivel that you never want the swivel to be a point of failure, but it also needs to be small enough that it easily goes through the guides of your fly rod. And what I've found is a size 8 um, or a size 10 high quality barrel swivel will go through the guides. And the two that I've used that I like are Gamma Kotze's Superline Swivel, Horse Bros Power Swivel. And for this uh, particular space swivel, I'm going to use a size 8 Spro Power Swivel. It's rated to 50 pound test. It's, it's stronger than any part of my fly line setup, so the swivel is not going to fail, and I already know that this is small enough to go through my spay rod guides just fine. Okay, to make this thing, we're basically gonna make two double braided loops. Only on one of the braided loops, it's gonna have a swivel attached to it before we close it up, and instead of making the loop the size I might normally make it, I'm actually gonna close that loop right down around the eye of the swivel. It's it, it's a little bit tedious, it takes a little time, but these things, like I said, they'll last at least a season for the casual user even longer. Now, I know that the, the, the leg of each of these pieces is gonna be about three inches long, maybe a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna need about six inches of material to make this thing. Cut my material. Um, braided monofilament is hollow. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a fly tying bobbin threader at the midway point of this. And to get the bobbin threader to go into that material easier, I'm gonna kind of push on it to get the material to open up a little bit. And I just take my bobbin threader, it's kind of pointed. I'm gonna rest the material on my finger and I'm gonna basically just poke it inside that hollow braid. And by accident, I went all the way through it, but I'm gonna back it up, get it right. And you can see that it started inside the braided material. I'm simply gonna push the braided material onto the bobbin threader. And at some point, I've gotta figure out 
how big I want my loop to be. Now remember one of these is going to be closed up tight against the swivel and we might as well do that one first. So I'm going to go a little bit farther and then I know that with this like this you can see if you look inside this you can kind of see the end of the bobbin threader. We're almost at the end where the swivel is going to be. So I'm going to go just a slight amount farther. I'm going to take my swivel and put it on. So there's my swivel hanging on there. And I'm going to poke the bobbin threader out the side of the braided material being careful not to let my swivel fall off because I, I want that swivel to stay there. I'm going to thread this far enough up the bobbin threader that I can open up the bobbin threader a little bit and catch the end of the braided loop material inside it. Easier said than done sometimes. Okay. So I've got it caught in the end of it. I'm going to slide this forward until it's pushing up against that material, like so. And I'm going to carefully kind of sweep back those ratty ends that you see sticking out. That'll help them go inside easier. And I'm going to start pulling on the bobbin threader to pull that material up inside the, the core. And as you can see, we got a little loop on the end. We got our swivel hanging there, but I want that actually fairly tight to the uh, swivel. So I'm going to keep going. And now you can see the, the whole thing is starting to become a, sort of rigid. I'm going to pull the material out the side of the braided material. Now this is kind of accordioned up right now. It's not pulled tight. So I'm going to very carefully start pulling it tight. Now, uh, 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 something to keep in mind. This is important. To make sure that you've got enough strength so that this thing doesn't pull apart, apart sometime, you want that overlapped material, that section from the swivel to where it comes out the side to be at least an inch long. If you don't have an inch, I would cut it off and start all over. You want to have at least an inch of overlap there. That'll ensure that it's strong enough. Now we need this to stay tight to the swivel like it is, but we need to get rid of those fuzzy ends. And here's how you do it. It's still kind of accordioned up. I know that I can pull the whole thing down this way a little bit and it'll cover some of that. Um, some of those fibers, but it won't cover all of them. So what I'm going to do is cut them, cut them close, like so. And then when I pull this tight, it'll cover those up completely. So there you go. So for this leg of the space swivel, we're halfway done with it. Next, we're just going to do the same thing on the other side without a swivel and create a little loop in here so that it can be looped onto your running line or the back of your Skagit head. Now I'm talking as I do this to try to uh, help you guys figure out how to do this, but once you've done it a few times, you can do it quite a bit faster than uh, what I'm doing in the video here. And what I'm doing now is trying to figure out how far to go up inside before I poke it out the side. Remember I want at least a, an inch of overlap for strength and then I want a little loop on the end. And I pre-measured my braided loop material at about six inches. I know that that's the right amount for what I'm trying to do here for a space swivel. But I still check the measurements to make sure. Okay, so again we've caught the end of the braided loop material. Now we're just going to slide the whole works down we're going to fold those fibers back as we pull them up inside itself. 
and I didn't mention this, but we went in with a bobbin threader right where the other uh, overlapped portion ended. And we're basically we're trying to get those ends to kind of butt up against each other. Okay, so I've come all the way through. You can see my little loop on the end that's a little smaller than I want, and the material sticking out in the middle is a little bit longer than I want. So I'm gonna carefully just start pulling back on that arm of the loop that'll pull the material back inside itself until I get it to where I think it'll all be hidden once I pull everything tight. We're almost there. Okay. That's really close. I'm going to cut some of those fibers off because my loop is big enough. There. Okay, you can see there's still a touch of those fibers sticking out in the middle, but when I stretch this on back, they should all disappear. Not all of them, most of them. And what you're left with is this right here. So that's half of a space wovel. Now I'm going to uh, go off on a little tangent and mention to you, if you are using monofilament running line, you could stop right here. In which case, you would loop your Skagit head onto this end, and with monofilament running line, you could actually tie it to this end of the swivel, and it would be plenty effective. Personally, my preference is to actually put another arm on the space swivel, even if I'm using monofilament, and loop to loop it together. I have more confidence in that connection than I do uh, my knots, because I'm not going in and, in and out of the guides repeatedly uh, I feel like it's just a recipe for disaster, whereas with a, with a braided loop material, it's really durable. Uh, yeah, I know I have a triple surgeon's knot downstream of that in the running line, but I coat that with UV knot sense, and it's basically bulletproof. So, you could fish it like this, but I prefer to make an arm on each side of the swivel. I think it's a, I think it's a better solution. Okay, measure out my six inches here and we do the same thing on the other end so I'm going to find the middle the three inch point doesn't have to be perfect but you want to be kind of close you want to be kind of close so that you wind up with an inch of inch plus of overlap on each arm so that it's strong Close. Yeah, that gives me at least an inch. Out the side. And I'll go ahead and do the swivel first. Swivel end. the end of the material. I'm going to slide the whole works down until it's close like that. And I'm going to stroke back until it slides up inside itself and I'm going to very gently pull it out in a second. As you can see the loop by the swivel is a little bit big yet but we can fix that as we continue to pull this up. Okay now it's rigid it's tight to the to the swivel eye, that looks good. I've still got some accordion type effect here that I can straighten out in just a second. Uh, but before I do, I'm gonna cut some of this excess off so that it winds up hidden inside the hollow braid. Cut that off. Pull it tight. It's completely up inside there. We got 
a little over an inch, inch and an eighth of overlap, so we're good there. Now the only thing left to do for this thing is put a loop on the other end of it, and then this thing will be complete. So I'm going to look at where the overlapped portion ends. I'm going to open it up a little so I can get the bobbin in there easier. And I'm going to start this right where the material ends or even slightly back farther so that there's a very small amount of overlap. Thread it inside there. And remember on this end you want a loop on the end so you have to be cognizant of that. And if I do it right there I'll have a very small loop. Got an inch and a half of line up there so I can actually pull it back a little bit so that I can have a slightly larger loop. Poke it out the sides. Catch the end in the bobbin threader, like so. Slide the whole works down. Get close. Stroke back those fibers so that they will more easily go up inside the material and carefully start pulling it out. You don't want to pull so far that you pull your loop up inside there too or you've, you're screwed. So pull it, it'll, it'll kind of stick when you get to the end. You want to just carefully work on it until it pops out. There. Okay, we've got a bunch of overlap. The beautiful thing with this, since there's no swivel in there, is I can actually pull this back out quite a ways, make the loop a little bit bigger at the same time. So I'm just pulling on one leg of the, the loop and it pulls the material back up inside. And I still have some accordion effect here that will straighten out when I pull everything tight. So I'm, gonna, I'm happy with the size of that loop. I'm gonna go ahead and clip those fibers off before I straighten everything out. Okay. Now all we got to do is pull this all out, out that way. I'm going to hold on to the loop so it doesn't move or change size. And I'm going to stroke all this stuff that way and it'll cover up those, those fuzzy ends. And there you have it. So we got a space swivel. This thing, the total length of it is about six inches long. To make each of these arms, I use six inches of material. The key features of this to make sure it's strong is you want to pull up at least an inch inside the material from each end. So if you look at this, it's about an inch and a quarter on that side and the same on this side to the midpoint. So that should be plenty strong. It's going to hold. The last thing to do is to simply coat the junction right there in the middle and right there in the middle with UV knot sense and you'll have a space swivel that'll last you at least a season. If you don't fish very much, it'll probably last you two, maybe even more. This completely eliminates line twist in your running line that spay casting tends to induce, especially if you're doing the same cast from the same side of the river for hours on end. This solves that problem completely. It also makes your running line last longer uh, because your line's not getting all kinked and coiled up. It's not getting kinks in it from catching on the reel or the guides or any of that kind of stuff. So it, it's really a, a good thing to do, and I, I don't want to go anywhere without it. Some of you, uh, if you subscribe to Fish Alaska Magazine, I actually wrote about this in the October slash November issue, um, and I talked more about the, the advantages of using a space swivel. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and this thing is essentially done. I hope you enjoyed this. I guarantee you if you start using a space swivel in your space setups or switch setups, your running line is going to last longer, you're going to cast more smoothly, and you're going to have much less frustration than you would have if you don't use one.